Welcome back to the Sioux City Show. This is episode 13, and today I am here with the Brew Crew, Matt Hubert and Kelly Quinn. They are the people behind Brew City Brewery and a new brewery that has started in Sioux City. And I want to let them kind of talk about what they're doing over there because the stuff they've come out with so far is super cool, and I wanted to get the story behind it. So either one of you guys, go ahead and give a rundown of what Brew City is and what you guys do. Brew City is a brewery that is located at Marty's Tap on Court Street. And so uh, Kelly owns Marty's Tap, and we've been brewing in there uh, since January. Yeah, well, officially since January. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think it, probably in about January or February of 2000 and, uh, what would that have been, 17? Yeah. Is when we started doing, uh, just kind of bringing in some, some brewing equipment. Because we would uh, brew over at Matt's house, actually, for quite a while. Right. Matt was kind of showing me the kind of ins and outs and and stuff. I had done some home brewing before, and uh, he was way beyond me, and uh, I kind of wanted to get back into it. So it was just kind of something where we would be brewing over at Matt's house and just talking about different beers and stuff. And uh, I would say in about maybe January, February of 2017, um, we opened that door into the kitchen of or right. what was the kitchen at Marty's and uh, kind of dawned on Matt that, hey, this is a perfect spot for a little nano, nano brewery. Awesome. And uh, I never saw it. You know, it was just something I never, never even considered. So I was like, all right, let's, let's do it. So we started uh, slowly getting all the, the, the kitchen stuff out of there. Had a big, like, confection oven and... And a couple other things that we weren't using because uh, the previous owners were and we weren't. So kind of got rid of all that stuff, cleaned it up, and probably within about a year started bringing a bunch of uh, equipment in. And awesome. It filing took some our, time. Yeah, getting our, yeah, getting our licensing through the, the TTB, the government, and then the, the state, and then the city. I mean, that all took about, about eight months. Okay. You know, um, had an issue with our... Uh, I think our filing right away, so it got sent back and had to resubmit it a couple times. But yeah, in about eight months, cool. Got our brewers notice on uh, I believe it was like November twenty fifth, and then uh, officially started brewing January fourth or fourteenth or something like that. Four. Nice. Yeah. So 14th, how did the how did like the brewing hobby begin? Like I mean, obviously you guys could probably started on separate. Um, I got yeah. Dates I, I, or whatever, I don't know how you, how you started. Yeah. How, how did you start? I mean, I was in Colorado. Okay. Uh, I moved out to Boulder after high school, and there were some breweries back then. That this was in '92, so the microbrewing was just kind of taken off in Colorado. So we were at Avery Brewing and all these little spots, and um, we just started messing around. Um, then I moved to Sioux City and. Um, started brewing with Kelly. Nice. So just a lot of home brewing, and then I got into the industrial aspect of it and started uh, developing software for breweries, and that's when it really clicked. Yeah. That we have all the tools necessary, you mm-hmm. know, with, between me and Kelly, we can make this happen. Mm-hmm. Nice. And Kelly, how'd, how'd you start? You know, I would say it was probably, oh, I would say about... Uh, about 2005 or so, I got my first first brew kit, the one you get get online, and I, actually, I think my wife got it for me for for like Father's Day or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I just you know tried a couple batches. I was still using like uh, you know the malt extract, you know, and then right. probably as far as like actually using, um, you know, doing you know all grain brewing was probably I don't know a few years ago. Okay. And then I kind of I made a few batches and mess around, and I love doing it. But then I just got pretty busy, and I, I didn't really get back into it until I started talking to Matt about it. Yeah. So, so. How, how long after you, like, start brewing does it take before you can brew a beer that you actually want to drink? Because uh, I don't I've, know. I've tasted people's home-brewed <laughs> beer before, and I've been like, oh, my God. When I was home-brewing, it was um, – some of that stuff said you got to wait, like, 30 days and, you know, three weeks to ferment. And, you know, but you're also using – you know, we didn't have any wort chillers, or we didn't have any. Right. You know, every then right. it was just using these little plastic or glass carboys, um, and putting them in a dark spot in your basement, and uh, <laughs> okay. you know, letting them sit for a long time. And I didn't know what you know when it was done, you know, fermenting, and just one of those things. Um, 
you know, back then it was probably 30 days. Now, you know, we got, with what we're brewing out of Brew City, we got some pretty, uh, this, these stainless steel unit tanks, which, which kind of allow it to uh, carbonate in the, the fermenter, um, which I think cuts down on time. So I don't know. There's some beers that we brew that, um, I mean, realistically, in about 10 days, they're ready to go. Um, there's some that, you know, obviously are longer, but it kind of depends on the beer. Sick. So yeah. I think we should uh, also, like, kind of make a note that Brew City is exclusively on tap at Marty's right now. Yeah. Correct? You guys have four four taps, four beers on tap there? Yeah, we got four taps right now. We're yeah. um, probably taking over two more um, here pretty soon. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, I think our, ideally we want to have probably just six on – I think six is a good number uh, up there, and I don't think we want to get any more yeah. or less. Um, you know, we're a pretty small place and a, a small brewery. You know, we don't – I don't know. We're, we're taking kind of a different approach to everything. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone's asking, where. you know, when can you get your beer at uh, Old Chicago or I want, I want to get this at, you know, these chains or I want to get it at these other local local places. And, you know, it's really right now just not in the cards. You know, we want it to be at Marty's. We, we want you to come up to – to where we're brewing it, to have it. Mm -hmm. um, we're not, I think initially when we started, you know, we were like, you know, we want to have our beer all over the world th yeah. type thing. We were thinking <laughs> big. And then, you know, once you started brewing and then kind of doing numbers and everything, and, you know, we're just like, you know, let's just hold on. Let's yeah. make it exclusive here. Let's make people come up here to have it. Yep. Um, you know, down the road, you know, when we incre increase our brewing capacity, different story. But right now, if you want it, come up there and get it. And mm -hmm. And I think, like, with any passion project, scale leads to it becoming a job. You know, it's yeah. rather than, right. like, actually, like, right. feeling like you're brewing what's coming out of the tap at Marty's, you just feel like you're kind of, like, overseeing a process, yeah. more or less. So We don't want to dilute that. For sure. The fact that, that we're, we can only get it up there, you know. And, and right away, you know, I'm, I'm a big picture thinker. So I, I, was, uh, I was thinking right away, how do we get it out? You know, where, do we, where are we moving next? You know, what mm. are we... Yeah, I think right. we slowed down on that a little bit, and I think in a good way. I, I, I think it's for a good reason. Right. Because uh, I think if you move too fast in this in this industry, I think you'll just get caught up, and uh, once you start thinking money and, and all that, mm -hmm. I think you kind of lose your uh, the integrity of the beer. Yeah. So right now we're just going to sit it, back and brew it up there and you know maybe make some changes, maybe maybe go into a big, slightly bigger system. But, you know, as far as getting it out there, I'm, I'm not, I don't think we're in a hurry right now. Yeah, and then I guess that also allows you to kind of like uh, quote unquote bootstrap it um, as yeah. a brewery, so you don't have to take on investor dollars, and then you're answering to somebody else about like what they think your best option is. For oh yeah, doing stuff, and this makes all the decisions on your end. And you'd be um, surprised how many people have have sent us messages. Oh, I'm sure. And you know, pe people I know that have the money, and people I know that they're you know they just want to they just want to be a part of it, you know. So they're just like, hey, what what can I do? Yep. I got man, I got five thousand bucks. What can we do? I'm like, <laughs> I'm not sure what five thousand bucks to get you in, in, in brewing because I mean the equipment is so expensive and mm -hmm. you know um, it's just one of those things where we're honored when people want to want to invest and want a part of it. Yeah. But but you're right. You know we don't we don't want to bring people in right you know right now we want to slowly do this ourselves and at the right time if we need to bring in somebody then we will. Yeah. Yeah. And then at least at least then you can make a strategic. Uh, except investment strategically. Sure. So if it's yeah. you know real somebody with real estate, then you can make some sure. deals there that right. that might suit your needs at the time, rather than just taking yeah. dumb money. Um, so what can somebody expect when they come to Marty's Tap to drink Brew City beer? Because it's like you said, it's not the typical um, snooty brewery by any means. It's not pretentious. So right. um, what 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 do you guys? hope the experience looks like for somebody who's coming up to try the beer? Well, the first thing is most of our beers are going to be real consistent with the, the branding and the taste and the delivery is we've got some real solid beers that we just want to always hit all the time. You know, the dad beer, the peanut Buddha stout and the lemon haze. Um, and that's, that's our thing, having signature beers and also having fun and trying some uh, milkshake beers or some, some other off-the-wall jalapeno. That one turned out pretty well. Yeah, so, yeah. people dig the jalapeno uh, pineapple. Yeah, and so I think what they can expect is real beer and real conversation. And mm -hmm. they can s sit right at the bar. The tap room has been there for over 60 years, I think. So it's uh, just... It's yeah, it's actually coming up on our... 
in the location we're in, Marty's is going to have its 50th anniversary next year. Dang. So we're going to have a big blowout. Um, but yeah, it was, I think, incorporated in 1962. It was actually across the street in that um, the place where the Mexican restaurant is now. Yeah. That's where Marty started. Oh, okay. Um, 62, and then it moved into the building it's in uh, 1969. So mm-hmm. we're going to have call it the 50 year next year. And, okay. Nice. Yeah. No, but as far as what people want to expect you know we, we we don't really we didn't intentionally say we wanted to have the laid back feel i think that just comes with our i guess matt if you know matt or me i guess that comes with our our personalities and, and our uh and, and i guess marty's in, in itself i think it worked out really good because mm-hmm. it's it's kind of a laid back bar um you know we're not gonna ha- we don't have a lot of like 12 point you know we're not gonna have some barley wines and and stuff like that quite yet right. um just because it's one of those things we we don't think our our core customers are, are going to like it. Mm-hmm. You know, we're kind of we're we're aiming at them. It's great, you know, when people come from out of town and really enjoy the beer. Um, I know there's some people that they come and they really want a sour, and you know, which we'll get to, we'll get to, but or they really want a you know a barrel aged, and it's just you know, we're just not there yet, and it's we're not really worried about doing the super high and point. And barrel aged sucks. <laughs> well, that's, that's it, it's a pet. You know, I've had some really good, good. That's it, true. It's it, it's all it's all on your taste, and you know, some people strive on it, right. and and, uh, and we have whiskey. If you if you want a shot of whiskey, we can sell you that. You're yes. not gonna mix Thank it with you. the beer. That's all I feel like. I, I feel like I'm just drinking really weak whiskey when I drink barrel aged yeah. beer. So, yeah, um, yeah, and I, I think that you know, from my perspective as a customer, I think that it is like truly like the the working class craft brew the neighborhood beer like i mean i put like um the vibe on it when you walk into marty's and get like a brew city beer is very similar to the vibe that um miller high life and budweiser are trying to fake in their branding like it's like genuinely what the other right. beers aspire to be sure. the working class beer like you know the, the every man's craft brew not to say that it's like a um, Pilsner tasting at all, but it is like, uh, <laughs> right. you know, yeah, like you guys have good beer that I've, I've told multiple people that are, you know, friends of mine that don't even know you guys that come there for a beer and they're like, God, you weren't joking. Like this is actually great beer, you know? So, um, I think that that's actually kind of rare, um, as much as craft beer is really having its moment in culture. I think that right. the people who are into craft beer are already into craft beer and that like the people who are like oh, I'll try a craft beer and if yeah. they're into it like that's a they're, right. they're not always in you know yeah. it's not it's not everybody doesn't have a taste for and, right. and I guess that was our flavors. I guess that maybe slightly was um our aim I, maybe not though maybe it was well, just that, kind of that's what I was thinking it, it, I think that was our aim at least mine with the dad beer I thought oh these guys that drink high life yeah I remember I remember Matt was like dad beer yeah he goes uh, I'm, we're gonna do the dad beer and all these because we have a lot of regulars up at Marty's who've been coming there for years and years and you know it's like I'm gonna get I want these guys to start getting into craft beer and it's funny because you know a few have and it's it's funny how many of these guys you know who are in their 50s and even 60s who are coming in the first drink they get is a is a dad beer. They they get the the Irish ale. They really like. Um, it's kind of funny. It's kind of like we're, uh, it's kind of like we're the stepping stone <laughs> into craft beer for some of these people. My okay, my mom for instance. Does I mean she's been drinking strictly just Miller Lite. That's that's all she ever gets when she goes out. She absolutely loves our uh, our pretty porter, right. and and the woke porter. And she comes in and now. That's that's what she gets. And I, I got to kind of tell her, hey, you know, this isn't Miller Lite, so. Yeah. Don't go one for one with your friends. Yeah. Here because I mean, some of these, I think, you know, what they're six percent or, or roughly, so I'm like, you know, just wa- watch yourself. You're gonna you be drinking double of your three point two percent friends. Yeah. Yeah, but there's there's a whole other class of of craft beer people who who really want to go out there and find you know, um, you know these these really you know high point stuff, and that's and not to say we're not gonna do it. You know, it's yeah. not it's not like we're not gonna be there, and we're only gonna, you know, go for the. Uh, low point beers it's not that it's just where we're at right now with our system and with what we have um that's where we're at and we'll probably stay close Pretty to close that to but that, i mean yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're yeah we're excited to try some 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 barrel aid stuff and you know it's as much as you know maybe some people don't like it i, I think we got to try to keep it well rounded too for sure and that's i think you guys have been doing a great job so far of having the dad beer on one end of the spectrum that's like the easily drinkable it's it's describable to somebody like hey it's a 
it's like a more flavored Bud Light. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. in that in, it's in that family. Um, but then yeah, you can have like the the double A's. Is, right. Double A's, right? The double A's, yeah. 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 And then, like that's you know that's a IPA fans beer. Yeah, it's know? a double IPA. Right. We've yeah. got we've gotten a lot of that. Would be the one that like some of the um, some of the craftier people really enjoy when they come in. They look for the double haze. Uh, we had a guy in a couple weeks ago who a uh, guy who owns Ale Bait Shop in in Des Moines and and uh, a bu- with a bunch of other places. Um, but right away he sat and talked. I talked to him for for a long time. Showed him the brewery and kind of walked around and you know he said he really wants double haze on on tap in at the nice. Ale Bait Shop and. I said, okay, we'll get it to you somehow. Um, but, you know, it's working just kind of... Working on it. Yeah, working on it. We, yeah, we said working on it about a million times. Oh, yeah. But, and uh, I, yeah, I, I guess, cool. like, from my perspective, I'm not even an IPA fan, but I love the Lemon Haze. Like, somehow it's my favorite beer that you guys have on yeah, tap, and I just love it. A lot it. of people yeah. say that. Yeah, so it's. It, I truly recommend, if anybody's listening right now it, it, and thinks, like, ah, oh, it sounds pretty decent, or is Taylor just doing a commercial for these guys? No, it's, <laughs> it's really good beer. Um but also, I think something that's important to note is that, like, you two are Sioux City guys. Matt, you're from Salix originally, right? Yeah, or Salix Sloan. and Sloan, okay. and then Sergeant Bluff. I slowly worked my way up to Sioux City. There you go. And I finally <laughs> made it. Yeah. <laughs> Big time now. And, yeah. and Kelly, like, you've been in, I mean, mm-hmm. I know my, my cousin went to high school with you, so I know oh, that, yeah. like, I've been to your shows yep. from way back in the day. You've been on the music scene forever. Sure. Um, how did, like, the transition from music to bar ownership to uh beer brewing all like kind of happened for you uh you know it's 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 just one of those things um it's it's been pretty seamless actually it's kind of one of those things to where it seems like everything's kind of falling in the right places uh music you know i played music for a long time a lot of music you know there was uh i think a time where we had counted you know i played over 500 shows Jeez. you know here in town and, and regionally and, and and stuff and you know it just got kind of to the end of my my band uh you know things were kind of falling apart and it was just time to move on to something something different mm-hmm. and the whole marty's thing kind of literally just just kind of popped up um the idea long story but i i kind of heard that it was for sale kind of on the on the down low mm-hmm. and uh called a good buddy of mine um Mac, who is uh, just a good, good buddy, uh, awesome business guy. And, you know, we had been talking for a couple of years prior saying, hey, you know, if the right thing comes up, would you want to get in, you know, get into the bar business or restaurant or, or something? And he's like, hell yeah, I'd love to, you know, mm-hmm. the right thing, let's do it. So I called him up and said, what do you think about Marty's? And he's like, what? I don't know about that one. You know, I said, is it for sale? I'm like, well, yeah, I'm calling you. What do, what do you think? And it, it, we took over Marty's and it was awesome because we kind of slowly turned that into kind of a little small live music place, you yeah. know, a lot more than it was. They were doing a lot of DJ stuff, but, you know, now we do like Friday night acoustic music. So the, the music thing kind of was still there because mm-hmm. now I'm booking bands in my own place. Um, and then with the brewery thing, it just, you know, kind of saying how it happened before with Matt just kind of coming in. It's it's crazy where we're at, but it's, it's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. I think that's like super important for... Um, people from Sioux City to hear too, because uh, I, I mean it comes up often on this show. But I think that, that there's such a lack of a mentality in Sioux City amongst people who like just the way that people are raised and how education works in Sioux City. That people aren't given like the hey, if you want to become a musician, like that's that's awesome. Do that for however long you want, and then start looking at business opportunities like with bars and if you know you want to start a brewery like there's there's pot there's ways for that to happen you know what i mean right so i think that everybody for some reason like it's so preached here that you have to go to high school then college then get your right. like uh, middle management bank job and then hopefully sure. someday move up into a higher position and i think it's like so important for young people to hear like people who feel like they're lost in their early 20s or whatever that might not have gone to college that like Hey, just keep working towards the next thing and like yeah. do do mm-hmm. your thing. So like how I guess like it's it's easy to gloss over, you know, starting a brewery and like ah oh, the paperwork sucks and you know, getting into the actual brewing, but like how would you guys rate the difficulty of getting like the actual <laughs> brewery started and getting like started. and what was it what was it compared to what you were expecting? Oh, it's a lot you know, um it's a, it's a lot, a lot of, of work. It's a lot of waiting. It's a lot of work. You know, 
people think we, you know, if people think we just fell into it, you know, like, like I kind of said, yeah, then fell into the brewing. We didn't just fall into it. it it's, it's a lot of work. Um, lots of talks and meetings on how we right. wanted to do this and if this would work. Um, it's a lot of work. Business is a lot of work. You got to put your time into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Lots um, of time without expecting, without any expectations, I think, no. is how you keep it positive. Um, yeah. You, know? yeah. you get, put the time in. Uh, y- y- there's luck involved with any with anything. You know, we we, uh, we kind of lucked out with, as far as the kitchen back there, already had a hood system, already had 220 um, electrical to run the, there's, there's mm-hmm. ovens, convection ovens or whatever, um, had drainage. Okay. Had its own water, um, you know, seeing everything stainless steel. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't it, have to I mean, change a thing to yeah. the space. No, we did. Mm-hmm. We did not have to to build in, you know anything. We didn't have to cover anything up. Um, so we got lucky, I guess, in the, in that respect. But uh, as far as getting it going, yeah, we. I mean, uh, getting your brewer's notice from the government is not a super easy thing to do. Um, I stress over it for a while just because there's. Just a lot of things you gotta you gotta have you know just you gotta have the right things and and they don't just give them to anybody right. you know um, I think they looked at the fact that we are already a business um, we had everything in place uh, you know we weren't just these two guys just starting it in a in a warehouse I, right. you know I think everything kind of lined up um, yeah. They gave it to us, so right. yeah. it worked yeah. out, and yeah, it worked out. But then know. we thought we were done. Which when we got our brewers notice, we were like, "Yes, we're ready to go. Let's go. Let's start brewing." And then I'm like, "Wait a minute, I might want to call the state. <laughs> I think we need to figure out what they oh, what right. they yeah. have to say." So I called the the alcohol division, which I, I have a couple of liquor licenses. So, you know, it's it's just one thing where I, I called them and just said, "Hey, here's what's going on." Because the city, the people, the the clerk and, and stuff, the city had no clue how to handle this because. We've never had a brew pub. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, it, I would imagine the brewery, um, Fort Street Brewery, would have right. been a brew pub. I can't remember. I they sold so. other stuff too. Yeah, but yeah, we're mm-hmm. a brew pub, which means we sell other stuff plus our stuff. Yep. So the city, they were like, we don't know if you need to call the state or what. So I called the state, and they're like, oh yeah, you need to. Yeah. You, you need to have a privilege to do this. You need to. We need to see your insurance. We need to have all this extra stuff. Um, so then they okayed it, and then we thought we were done. Then I called the city back and said, okay, I called the state, and they're okay. And they're like, well, you know, we talked to the building inspectors, and they need to come up now. Wow. They need to come up and look at everything. So we had an electrical, yeah. and, you know, it was one of those things where we thought we were ready all these times, and it was kind of funny. I was like, guess what? Get another <laughs> snag. But yeah, then right. finally, inspectors came up, said we're good. I double-checked. I called everyone and just said, are you sure we can do this? Mm-hmm. And they're like, right. yeah, yeah, it's on there. You, good to go. Nice. And we're like, now what do we do? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I guess we brew beer. And that's when we kind of made the announcement. And right. everyone was like, what? Yeah. Are, are you serious? They, people are still, right? Like, yeah. We don't brew this here. And then I, we take them back to the room. They're like, holy shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. You guys are brewing this year. So. And I know, I know I've showed at least Matt this before, but I 100% tweeted that there needs to be a brewery called Brew City in Houston. You said that, yeah. Yeah, like one, uh, like a, a year before. Yeah, I a year before you guys you opened. Should, yeah, I saw that. Like, that was funny. It was definitely a public tweet. And right. Matt, I know you guys had already been like using the name for a while. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, I was like, damn, I did. I, I had a good idea and I'd already missed the boat on it. I yeah. know. Thank you for thinking of that ahead yeah. of time. Oh, someone, someone else said that too. I had an interview with Adrian Cobo, um, who works with the city. Now he's with um, Stone Brew. But uh-huh. he was doing uh, the Food for Thought podcast. Yep. I was talking to him, and he's like, do you know what? i got to tell you, I always wanted to start, uh, w- whether it be a podcast or something, called Brew City. And I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Like, that's funny. It's how like, it goes. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, we, we all snoozed and loosed on that one. Brew City, too. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> and, I, you know, I just think it's like there's so many people who can look at something that's been started, like uh, a brewery, or I, I get it all the time for you know, doing like video stuff as a career is that people are like, yeah, I wish that I, my job was going to film people on a camera. You know, that seems like really easy. And it's like, <laughs> it's not the worst job in the world, but you weren't there for the 10,000 hours on the front end that yeah. like I started right. when I was yeah. 14 and I never got paid for a video until I was 25. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> like there's, there's some 
back end right. legwork that goes in all this and you know for you guys like figuring out you know first of all making the investment into brewing equipment in the first place second figuring it out over the hundreds if not thousands of right. hours and then yeah um finally doing all the bullshit paperwork to actually make it come together is and it was um, scary it's insane. scary too you know because we were like what if we do this and the beer just sucks you know yeah. I mean? right. but, but yeah you know i was trying matt's brews and, and i guess one thing we did that um not a lot of people know but we we were doing we we're having a what would you call them? We we're inviting our. We're having these like <laughs> weird. Uh, <laughs> these invite. I think I went been to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You came up like speakeasy but, stuff. Yeah, yeah, but we had a, a few of those, several of those, where we were just getting people up there, and we had sheets out. And we just wanted to know what people thought of the beer, because mm-hmm. um, you know, the, especially in beer, the craft beer world, um, first impressions are really big. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think you might they, they might give you a second chance, but if you don't hit on that second chance they're done. You know what I mean? Right. So for we, sure. So I was telling Matt, you know, it's very important to come out, come out strong. Um, and, uh, so we, yeah, we had these tastings, we had our friends come up there and we were like, be honest, mm-hmm. you know, and there was some, there was some pretty good, uh, yeah, we good had some feedback. good, some good negative feedback. And I would take things, it personally. You know? I was just like, you know, and then <laughs> it was just one of those things. I'm like, well, you know, we just need to adjust. And then by the time we opened, we, we had things, Pretty, uh, mm-hmm. pretty squared away. Pretty squared away, where we wanted so. it to, I yeah. think. Yeah. And you guys started pretty much, I think, didn't you have the... Dad was one of your first beers that you released, yeah. right? Yeah. And then there's like the, the Pretty, pretty porter, porter and the Peanut yeah. Buddha was one of the yeah, first Buddha beers. Yeah, Peanut Buddha was one of the first yeah. ones, too. Yeah, and that Lemon Haze was right around the like, start as well. The, yeah. Peanut Buddha was, kind of went through some phases because the way we right. make ours, we, you know... Well, I guess we can't release the... Uh, yeah, don't release the no. secret sauce. No, but next episode. Yeah, next episode. <laughs> oh, geez. It's no. true. It was something Kelly we did, really said. Pe- I did a peanut butter beer. Yeah, I did at peanut home. butter beer at home. That was oh, one of my no, home brews. Let's try like, it, you like, know? Like, yeah. So we already kind of had a stout recipe, so we started throwing in the peanut butter at different times, and then now recently we've changed it even. We, cha- we changed it because so it was easier to clean. We're like, this really sucks having to clean <laughs> yeah, this right. way. That's the way we're doing <laughs> right. it. Yeah. We're like, what if we just did it this way? And we're like, yeah, that's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. But it came out a lot different, you know? Right. I thought oh, it was sure. came. Coming out with almost like a, like a burnt peanut butter right. taste. I, maybe not burnt, but it, it just wasn't the way it was. Yeah. And, and and our customers yeah. let us know right away. They're like, "Whoa, what you know what happened?" Right. You know. Right. And, yeah. And uh, we went back to it, and they were they're like, "There it is." I'm All not sure right. what you guys are doing. We're like, "Well, whatever it is, we're we're gonna keep it." So we're gonna just kind of funny scrubbing how, vats, I guess. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, I got that down pretty well. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, and uh, you know we've mentioned the dad beer a few times, but we should put the uh, asterisk that that's in relation to Dad, the rap group from Sioux City. Like it's mm-hmm. um, right. the beer that's done in partnership with them, yep. and also like keeping the whole like Sioux City <coughs> insular crew going is like Jason or Ebola of Dad is uh, the mastermind behind a lot of the graphics for Brew City. Correct? Yep. If oh, if yeah. not all, all of them, of pretty them. much, yeah. Even yeah. the logo, the Bruce City logos. Yeah, Jason, mm-hmm. Jason has actually been my go-to guy for, for a lot of the. I mean, he's done pretty much everything. He he redid the Marty's logo, mm-hmm. uh, Bruce City logo. He did, he's the one that did the marquee logo. He's done pretty much all of all of our graphic design stuff. Just because he's so consistent, um, and he's not one of those guys where you call him and say, "Hey, you know, this is what we're lo- this is what we want," and then, you know, he comes up with it. He he kind of he kind of chimes in. Yeah. He's like, well, I, I'm not sure. What if, what if you do this? You know, which is, so it's good. So he's right. kind of on, on the marketing team, I guess you would say. Yeah. For uh, sure. for Brew City, he is he is uh, a big, big influence behind the branding behind, um, awesome. and Brew City for sure. Somehow, uh, Dad ends up oh, Dad, coming yeah. up on in every damn podcast I do. I end up talking about because <laughs> j- like Jason, Jason and Mark both have. I was just sitting with uh, Jay Medina earlier. Or, uh, psychedelic sidekick the rapper um, for anybody listening and uh, was talking to him about he's been working with dad a lot lately and he's like yeah you know Mark's been like the ultimate mentor as far as like crafting uh, rhymes and verses but Jason has like been able to teach me everything about like how I do marketing how I get my stuff yeah. heard how I get exposure and like and it's great that like not only has dad proved that you know they're the duo that can like put all that together and really right. reach a bigger audience and do it successfully but they're also like helping out you know local breweries they're helping out local uh, rappers and like kind of giving all that back to the city and I think that like 
you know, in, in Sioux City, unfortunately, there's oftentimes a, a famine mentality instead of a feast mentality. If somebody sees success, then some people might be quick to be like, oh, well, they don't deserve their success, right? Oh, they're, we're better than them at, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, when you look at the feast mentality, like, having people be successful from Sioux City breeds more success because then you're oh, able really? to, like, teach other people how you did it, whatever it may yeah. be. Yeah. And it even mm-hmm. crosses, uh, you know, lines like it you know goes from rap to um brewing you know it right. has like some crossover and how to transfer success to other people and i think especially mm-hmm. with us too you know we we want to we want to incorporate live me- local stuff you know brew city sioux city you know it's it's not like we're you know i mean one of our main things is we want to keep things local yeah like we source our hops locally we get our ingredients locally um it's just one of those right. things where we, we, we really want to keep things local. So when dad, Jason, came up, who was developing stuff with his branding for Brew City, and uh, he said, yeah, you know, we're, we're putting out our seed to release. Um, and I think we were like, why don't we create a beer for yeah. you guys? <laughs> right. And then we said, we told those guys, we we're like, okay, you guys got to tell us what the beer should taste like. And I remember uh, Jason or Mark, I can't remember who said it, and they're like, we want our, the beer to taste like something you could drink after mowing the lawn. Yeah. It's a perfect dad beer. So yeah, that's how that kind of dad came out. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, the branding has been awesome. Uh, and those guys just, they're, they're, uh, they get it. Yeah, they get it. And their success has yeah. been, you know, awesome. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really cool working with Jason and Mark. Most definitely. And you guys have brew fest coming up as well. Yeah. We should, 25th. we should plug. Yeah. August while we're here. 25th. Um, yeah. Tell, so, what, what's going to be going on there? What can people expect when they come out? When they come out? Not if. Well, when they an, come out. It's an <laughs> outdoor concert. It's in the parking lot of Marty's Tap, mm-hmm. 13th and Court. Uh-huh. Uh, it's also the CD release party for Vibrations. Yeah. It kind of started with the Vibrations approaching us, saying they wanted to do a CD rep- release party up at, right. up at Marty's Brew City. Um, and then talking to Jordan and Joe, and, and we're like, well instead of a just a release, why don't we make this an all-day event? Mm-hmm. And then uh, Mike Kessel from Aorta got brought in and, and to help out with the music, and we're like, well, you know, why don't we call it... And I think Jordan said it. I think he's like, what about Brewfest? Yeah. And I was like, oh, dude, yes. <laughs> right. Let's roll. So now, yeah, so it's it's something where we're going to have... It's not just music, you know, we got food we got food trucks that are going to be up there. We got um, eight local artists they're going to be set up in our, our patio. It's going to be uh, kind of showcasing their, their art, um, yoga. selling it. We are doing, yeah, we're starting out with yoga. Matt's the yoga master. That's yeah. Right. Matt is the yoga master. So I went to my sit. first yoga class a couple weeks ago. You died? With Matt. Uh, no, I didn't die, but I, I was def- I felt out of place. Um, He's living more than ever now. I'm, yeah, it's weird. Uh, every, so, I've, I've, I think I've been talked into <laughs> doing yoga like twice. And both times I was like, holy shit, this is so much harder than I expected it yeah. to be. And like, I just don't, I don't like exerting a ton of energy in a room full of people. There's something about like being, <laughs> right. dying that I just want to do it alone. So I'm, I don't right. think yoga's for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're not going to give up on you. We'll get you at the next session. Yeah. Thanks, right. dog. Yeah. I, I, also, I have no shame in quitting. So uh, I, I will walk, walk out of a room just five minutes into a class. <laughs> not, Child's pose is always available oh, to okay. you. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be all right. Yeah. That's I went to a, a CrossFit class when I was deployed one time, and I like it was like a room full of you know like people in the military that were all deployed. So it was like everybody's in full on badass mode. Five minutes in the class, I was like, ah, this isn't for me. I'm gonna go take a hike. Right. Everybody stops and turns around as I'm walking out. I just later, not, not me. Sure. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do it shamelessly at any point. So okay. don't even bring me to a class. Hey, yeah, I don't want you to embarrass me. That's yeah. Sure. So like yoga, music, yeah, art, yoga, class. art, music. We got uh, music starting at, at one o'clock. Yoga from 12 to 1 outside. Um, Macy Vollmer is going to be, be doing that. And uh, Her Grace, a local uh, acoustic act, is going to be actually doing live music for the yoga, Dope. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, then after that, we got some some really, really cool performers. Devin Cadwell, uh, Mace Hathaway from Omaha. Mace uh, Hathaway is a killer, too. Yeah, he's awesome. Oh, right. Yeah, I saw him w- open up for uh, Sean James at the Marquee. Yeah, yep. And, like... He he was like the dude that I I had to Google because I was like, there's no way that this is like just a, a local like a yeah. or even a region. I thought it was on tour, but no. I had him at Marty's from a few Omaha, times. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I took a chance on him. Not took a chance on him, but uh, a buddy of mine who owns a Growler USA down there contacted me and said, "Hey, you know, I got this guy who wants to get up there." I said, "Well, let's bring him up." 
mm-hmm. skimming a, a shot. And right when he started finger picking for a sound check, I remember looking over Libby or somebody working. I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. I'm like, this, <laughs> "This guy's really good." So he's slowly kind of get, getting a, a, a crowd yeah. in here in town. So, uh, um, which is great for him because he's uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but I mean, besides Mace, we got you know Thick Mistress is going to be there doing an acoustic deal and then we got I think an hour break and then we got um all uh rock band not rock bands but full bands yeah so and that's gonna I think we got five or six um ending with uh five rations oh CD release nice yeah. nice and I and I will vouch I've been to one outdoor concert at Marty's I went to Sean James and it yeah. was in my top five concert of my life so you know yeah. I expect nothing less from <laughs> yeah 20 bands being in the parking lot we've so. got some really sure. killer shows out there which is which is funny we had a uh, we had Supernova from California and the the guys who wear the space space stuff. Um, yeah, they, they were out there a couple of years ago, and and it, yeah, it's 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 cool. It's you would drive by and say this is not a place you should be having an outdoor yeah. music because uh, you know we're in a residential area, but uh, you know we let the police know and and we let the city know what's going on, and and you know thankfully they they let us do it. And mm-hmm. It's once a year, so I, everyone's. So we'll look out and see all the neighbors uh, in lawn chairs out in there. Nice. Not nice. all of them, but uh, you know, some of them. Probably <laughs> Half of them are probably on the phone. A, on, right. on the redial, phone. Redial. Redial. Pillow over their head. Yeah. Or, you know, cocking their their gun. Who knows? <laughs> They're. Uh, yeah, but either way, it goes. It goes good, and and it's gonna be. I love it. I love it. So, um, yeah. this is the big the big part of the show. Is uh, what do you think is the most slept on in Sioux City? And that can be like you know anything, restaurants, things to do, people to see, whatever it may be. And to give you guys time, I can go first. Um, <laughs> okay. The most slept on. Yeah. You've been waiting to say this. Huh? My most slept on. Oh, I do it every episode. <laughs> I, it shows how much you guys watch. Thanks a lot for all the support. Uh, uh, my favorite. Is, I think that something everybody needs to know about is El Michoacano Meat Market. It is on the corner of 25th and Myrtle, maybe. twenty. Yeah, 25th or 26th and Myrtle. And it is a... The old Dairy um, Queen? No. This is... That's... Other end. That's uh, on Center Street and West 7th. That's Mona Blanca. Oh, no, no. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's a, market, yeah. It used to be... They got a little place in the back to eat. Exactly. Yeah. I'm talking... Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about is the restaurant in the back. It was closed down, like, basically all summer. And it just reopened like a month ago, and it is the tits. It has, uh, I mean, like they they make like authentic Mexican food. It's like you know, compared to uh, all the white people listening, it's like La Juanitas. Um, and it is the, but like you also, it's a sit down restaurant that is like right. La Juanitas esque food. That you know, you get chips and salsa before your meal. They bring it all out to you, and it is unbeatable especially the tortas i recommend the carne asada torta and uh, oh, I remember that i think that everybody yeah. should go there and like i mean they're not they're not hurting for business this isn't a plea to everybody because every time i go in there it's like four blocks from my house and it's packed so i just want everybody to clear out but it is great and i think that they deserve more recognition than they get on saturdays and sundays they do like grilled chicken menudo all that kind of stuff and it's tons of options and great food so awesome i'll let you guys slip uh, in I gotta say, just the outdoor activities you can do in Siouxland. I mean, I moved here from Denver, uh, from the Breckenridge area too, about six years ago. Um, and coming back, it's just, there's a lot to do here. Stone Park, you know, the bike path. Mm-hmm. I mean, d- there's, there's more than enough things to do around here. And I think once you move away, because everyone wants to move away and leave, yeah. when you can come back and appreciate Siouxland for not only the awesome food that we got, you know, El Garo. True, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got a lot of activities, a lot of outdoor stuff to do, too. So um, that's my secret gem. Perry Creek Bike Path, <laughs> see you there. I dig it. I think bike, the bike path was mine last week, but I'll give it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kelly, do you have one? A sleeper. Um, you know, I... T- I got a couple. Can I do two? Well, yeah. Yeah, unless... Yeah, go ahead and do two. You sure? Just I've, this once. Yeah, just this okay. once. You're, you're a special guest. I, I've cut people off before, <laughs> but I'm going to let this one slide. I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. I th- you know, the one sleeper is, is, I think, Sioux City, you know, local live music. Um, I think people... Uh, 
I think there's a ton of really awesome bands in this town, and uh, it's it's one of those things to where um, it gets hated on a lot. Um, I th- I think uh, as much as people say that that there's, um, you know, everyone's going against each other, you know, in, in a lot of music mm-hmm. music uh, scenes in other cities, it's like that. Um, just you know, having the the marquee and seeing it firsthand, um, whether it be in the jam nights or, or just working there and bartending and seeing a lot of different musicians, it's, uh, you know, I th- I think people don't give the credit due of how good uh, this music scene is here, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is growing and it's evolving, you know, always. And uh, so I think, yeah, the, the music scene, whether, you know, you're seeing them at, uh, at the Marquee or if you're, you know, catching an acoustic show at, at Marty's or, or Whiskey Dick's, um, you know, there's a lot of, the Ox is a, a really cool place mm-hmm. that is doing, uh, you know, bringing in all these, these underground bands, um, all ages shows. I think stuff like that really helps the music thrive. Um, so, yeah, so I think local live music is a, is a sleeper. The other thing is Jose's. I gotta say it, Jose's family restaurant. Oh damn! Okay. <laughs> when you were saying, uh, was it the Michicana? Uh, yeah, El Michicano, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a dude from El Michicano. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I have to say, Jose's is is me and my wife's go to. We love Jose's, and everyone. Uh, nothing against La Juanitas, which is is good, and people come from long ways away to yeah. have La Juanitas, which is awesome. Uh, Jose's, which is Kitty Corner. Yeah, 14th and Pierce. is awesome. Jose is always there if you're there during the day. Um, otherwise, it's it's kind of one of those things where me and my wife go in and they know exactly what we want. Kind of like we're Very. the norms of uh, cheers of, of cheers at, nice. at, at Jose's. But it's 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 awesome. Um, same thing. It's just really good quality food. And um, every time people come in and say, hey, you know, where's a good place to eat that we don't know about? And I always say, go to Jose's. So it's really good. So I've never been, and you've yeah. never been. How, no, about, how about this? I'll I'll go to Michoacano this week, and I'll give you my full rundown. But you got to go to Jose's. Sounds good. I'm okay. I'm a uh, Mexican food connoisseur. It's basically all these. So yeah, it, I can't it, believe I haven't been. Dude, yeah. do it. It's one of those where people always drive by just to go to La Juanitas, but yeah, um, and and it's you know it's never really busy, which is kind of. Kind of sad, but you know they're always open late, right. and uh, yeah, got to give it a try. My favorite Mexican. Uh, I'm going to come in from left field here. But my favorite burrito in Sioux City is at uh, La Momia on 11th in Nebraska. Yeah. So I always tell people, they put like, lettuce in it. Yeah, I, I always tell people they're driving past cream. the number one like Mexican what? restaurant in Sioux City to get to yeah. a different one. But yeah. yeah. La Momia, yeah. they put lettuce. I'm just like, dude, is this lettuce? This, it's not right. Oh, I'm it. just going to get. Cut over that, man. This, oh, this, this cool. my, well, my girlfriend. The it's very controversial. <laughs> my girlfriend has one of those people with the just most embarrassing orders to give. You know, like when you when you got to order something and you're like, uh, can I get a burrito with everything? I had rice, beans, avocado, tomato, and take out, you know, beans, whatever. You know, it's the worst. And uh, La Momia like puts in everything that she already asked for to be in it. Really? So I'm like, thank God. I, just, <laughs> I think I go there so I don't have to be sure, embarrassed yeah, about the embarrassed. order. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, do you guys have anything else to add that you think uh, we missed? We glossed over. Um, God, we don't know. We got I I covered everything oh, on my list here. Uh, for Brew City, we did come up with a whole new. Or for Brew Fest, we have uh-huh. two brand new beers that are yeah. going out. Right, right. The main one we're showcasing is is what we're calling Vibe PA, based off Vibe Rations. We got we got a logo and everything because those dudes are so awesome. Um, if you know Jordan and, and all those guys, Jewel, they're super good dudes. They're having their CD release, so we said, you know what, why wouldn't we do a beer for it specifically for you? Mm-hmm. It's called IPA. It's a Blood Orange IPA, uh, which will be released, and depending on, on the feedback, uh, <laughs> right. I guess it'll, it, it'll be only available for Brew Fest yeah. on August 25th, and then we uh, are also, we're, we're going to release it last week, but we're going to wait for Brew Fest. It's our uh, um, Milky Way Milkshake yeah. IPA, Vanilla. Damn. IPA, so that that'll be there too. So if you come to Brewfest, you're gonna have two brand new beers you never had, um, and uh, and all the other stuff you've had before, probably. Right. Sounds yeah. good. Six beers on tap. Damn. So, yeah. All right. So, well, and those are just the Brew City beers. Obviously, if you want yep. something else, there's other beers on tap yep. too. So. We won't discuss this. No, yeah. no, Ugh. I can't believe I brought that. <laughs> uh, Damn it. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. We got something for everyone. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out. This is 
Yeah. Always yeah, a treat. Yeah. Um, it's hotter than hell in here, and these guys really stuck it's it out. Good. I have a, air con- a new air conditioning unit that Matt provided me, which is <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so there you have it. Uh, you know, yoga masters, musicians, sex symbols, brewers, all that. <laughs> um, the fellas from Brew City were in the building. And until next time, this right. is the Sioux City Show. Thank you. <laughs>